Okay, so guess what? So I finished the game. So, anyways, you know what? I decided after the last tutorial just to go ahead and complete the the game the way I like it. Just at least make it look like something I would say this is finished. So, um, I didn't make a, a ton of changes. I mean, I've, as you saw the last video, we were basically finished. We had started to use colors and styling and some of that stuff. And once you start doing that stuff, you can sit there for hours. And I didn't really sit there for that long. But let me just show you what I've done. You'll you'll notice a couple things. I've added text to the screen, which is very easy to do. Um, I've also added like a score counter and um, a lives counter. Um, let me just keep playing. Oops, I'm on my recording software. Uh, that's the recording software I use for these videos. It's called OBS Studio. So you can see like you can put like your camera like where you want it to be putting the the guy which in this case the guy is me. <laughs> I don't actually know what happens if you change it in the middle of recording but we'll see. But um, anyways, yeah it's free so open source is always fun. Uh, let me just keep going so I can show you how. So like basically the, what I decided to do was make it so that once you've cleared the um, the level um, it's going to create either twice as many rows or twice as many columns so I have like a little um, part inside of there that just kind of like allows that to change so you know all in all I made kind of a lot of changes but like honestly they're not very hard to do like I said we've already built the important part of the game um, let me also show you that I have a lives counter so if you die so now let's get down to one. I gave three lives. That's like what I grew up with. It says, sorry, you ran out of lives. And this time, if you click to start over, it goes back to the first level. So you can kind of see how that's going. So let's go ahead and dive into the code. I'll show you what I've done. First, um, the paddle. So this is what I changed on the display. You'll notice I added a bunch of, so I, I kind of, I think I did this at the first, in the last tutorial where I added like an extra thing, but I also added these lines on the inside. So these lines are basically just drawn on the inside to kind of make it look like a paddle. I know I kind of looked up the uh, image. Before you could do an image by the way. You could just look up the image of it, but I'm trying to do nothing with images so there's nothing to upload. So but um that's a, I put those lines in there to kind of give it a target. Um the outer one, you see it's just basically got um it's got a rectangle on the outside. I decided to use some colors. I, I filled with the colors for a little bit. I'm not 100% sold on the colors, but I've at least gotten myself to a place where I feel good. So, um, anyways, that's kind of all I did with the uh, paddle. Um, for the ball, same thing. I did make it bigger, so I changed the diameter to 28. I don't know why I came up with that. Um, and I also added quite a bit in the um, check paddle part. So basically, I already had this part last video where you cap the velocity. I actually capped it at X this time, at 8. And the reason is, is I decided that I was going to let the VY and the VXs kind of add up to no more than 12. And I don't know if, why I came up with that number. I just actually trialed and errored it a bunch. So that's kind of where I'm trying to save you the time. So I added some conditions which will make it so it just seemed to run a little bit smoother. So kind of if you hit it off to the side, it gains velocity in the side direction, but it loses velocity in the vertical direction. If you hit it more um, in the center, or if you get it going more straight up and down, it actually goes a little faster. I thought that was more realistic. And it's not hundred. I didn't like calculate anything. It's definitely not like perfect, but at least that that does that part. Um, and so, and then in the block class, um, I added quite a bit more color stuff. So this is what I had the first thing. I added another one that does this. Okay, so this is basically add some green. So I actually had two. I didn't have that in the last video. Um, but then I also added this stuff. So um, you'll notice I have kind of added just a little bit to make the blocks kind of look way cooler in my opinion <laughs> so anyways that's when my blocks have that like little bright yellow you see that little bright yellow in the inside that's from this little thing right there so you can play around with that so take some time just just run it over, and over. my kids my students come up with like really cool looking stuff um, it's mostly like exploratory just like add something shift it change the color something will just grab you and then you'll be happy with that so that's all I really changed and so you'll, again this is all just like details and stuff alright so let's go to the main game so how did we actually so here's what I added I added 
a few integers. One, rows, columns, which is, by the way, what we use to create these. Before, I had those as numbers. Remember, I kept changing those numbers. Um, in this case, I still have that. So, like, I have them set here, but I have rows and columns set. But then I decided to take all that code that was in there, the all the making the block. So let me just show you that code. So the make level, where'd it go? Okay, so first of all, I took the show block. So this chunk of code, I turned into show blocks. Most of what I did, let me actually just go to the main draw function real fast. Sorry, this is, so remember how before I had a loop in here and I had a whole bunch of stuff? So what I ended up was I, I cut that out and I cut the code and put it into show blocks. So I just like basically hit it up. So this is basically how my main program looks. It, it draws a background, it draws a display of the ball, it checks the ball against the paddle, it checks the paddle, I mean, it displays the paddle, it shows all the blocks, it shows your lives and your score, which aren't very hard to understand what those do. And then another thing which I haven't talked about yet is I check the level. So the show blocks was just that big loop, that 4i, and remember all that, the, the double array? So let's look at show blocks real fast. So this is probably familiar to you. I literally just cut and paste that code and hit it, so it was, it was out of the way. Um, then I did write these things. So for show lives, it's pretty simple. It's basically just write a text box, you know, just, uh, just write, write lives plus a lives. And um, as long as lives, if lives ever equals zero, I just tell you that you can't, well, uh, you ran out of lives and click anywhere to restart. Um, so remember in the mouse press function, which we had at the bottom, I added, so we used to just have this part, right? Now I added some more code. I just said, if lives is greater than zero, then, well, first of all, this was because the ball kept getting stuck to the paddle, not all the time, but sometimes. And I didn't know why, so I just shifted it. So remember, I talked about that in the first video. So that was just a little, um, just get it off the paddle so that it can be free. Um, and then if you run out of lives, so if your lives is equal to zero, I can run the setup again. I don't think I've mentioned that, but you can actually call the setup more than once. Even though void draw is constantly running, that's your main loop, void setup can be called. So it's just like any other thing. You can call that whenever you feel like it. Um, okay, so this is the big one, the check blocks. This is the code that I added to see if all of our blocks were gone. So I literally go through all of the blocks and if any of them have a status that is true, so if any of my blocks, their status is true, I, I return false, meaning I have not checked all the blocks. I have not cleared the blocks. I guess I should call this clear blocks. Clear blocks. blocks. And I put that at the end of my draw function. So if you look at my draw function, Oh, it's check level. If clear blocks. So if the blocks are clear, first I level up, then I tell the ball it can't move anymore. Uh, I move the ball to the paddle. Then this right here is just a text box. So the fill zero just draws a black background. That's in case there's so many blocks that I don't want the text on top of it. So I put a black rectangle. So that's what these rectangles are. They're to host these things. So it's a common button, basically. Um, and then I just tell them, you cleared all the blocks, press anywhere to continue. And if you press the mouse, then I, first of all, um, well, I already leveled up. See, it says level plus plus. So level is just keeps track of what level you're on. You start at level zero. Um, if level is divisible by two, I multiply the number of rows by two. And otherwise, I multiply the number of columns by two. and um, then it's just make level rows columns. I probably actually should put a condition that is a maximum, so there should be a maximum number of rows you can't. You can't have it go off the screen, but I didn't really think about that until just a second. And then I make a new level, so, and I use now, because I've changed the, mod, the number of rows or columns, that will make it so that there's more, there's either double the rows or double the columns. And that's about it. So that pretty much is the end of the game. So um, I'll leave this code for you in the description. So feel free to um, comment, like it, subscribe. 
I don't know what else am I supposed to say. Um, mostly, I make this for my students, but I'm kind of hoping that other people will like it too. So if you're have no idea who I am, but you kind of enjoyed the tutorial and you actually watched it and built it and learned something, then that's pretty cool, and I'd love to hear about it. So, anyways, um, on to the next one. My next game, in case you're curious, sneak peek. Let me show you what I'm working on. I'm working on a Tetris game. So this is something I've been working on. This is a sneak peek. Of no oh no! <laughs> what happened? Uh, that's weird. So this is my Tetris game. I just started building it. I don't know what's going to happen now that I, I don't have it writing shape. It's got to be able to write the shape. Anyways, this is what I've been working on. So if you're interested in learning how to build Tetris, I've already on the right track. And once I've completed my game, I'll take you along and build your game. So, anyways, it's been fun. Talk to you guys later.